Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Guida City of Umbrellas. Before I get to that, please remember this was a sponsored preview. And with that out of the way, let me just say, uh, Dustin Dobson and Milan uh, Zivkovic, good job, guys. This is a wonderful little game that Jen and I enjoyed quite a bit. The pair bit of flexibility built into it and just uh, 25th century games. Good job to you, too. Even though this is a prototype, this is such a lovely looking little game with these really, really cool umbrellas and, um, you know, the huge amount of variety that comes from all the different shops that you can choose from randomly that will create radically different styles of scoring opportunities that you are chasing every turn while every round dealing with a wonderful draft uh, that uh, is uh, actually kind of inspired from a game I played years ago from designer Jeffrey Allers called um, um, Citrus. And, you know, that same idea of, hey, pick an entire row or an entire column, but this game builds on that original draft from all those years ago by actually tying your economy into it as well. And that's the first tough choice you have to make every round. Okay, am I going to grab one, two, or three umbrellas? If I grab three so I can really, uh, you know, decorate my... Um, what do you call it, my street to best effect and fastest effect because depending on how game, the game evolves, you might be racing against other players to get your street filled up before everybody else because you don't want to lose points for not having done the job by the end of the game. But if everybody's taking their time, well, maybe you don't want to burn money and grab three. Maybe sometimes you just want to take a single one because that fills a need you have perfectly and that makes you money so that on future turns you can go for big stuff. But that's just the beginning of a round because then uh, you've got to decide how many tourists that you have uh, from your queue that you've built up are actually going to come and look at these things or are all the tour you're going to send them all home for the day so that we can prepare for another day of tourism which means all of the streets reprogram and then suddenly oh that big huge collection of purples that I was building up on one row those don't do me any good anymore not unless I keep resting and keep resting to get that back down here so I can score that big one. But the more I rest, the fewer opportunities I have to score throughout the game. So this system is really, really cool. The way the world is constantly evolving because of choices I make. Do I um, you know, forego smaller uh, you know, quick scores to go for that big one? Ideally, though, I have built all of these rows so that they all have the potential to score well every opportunity. But then there's the question of, hey, is it is this like a monolithic? Is there just nothing but yellow up here? Then I want to get the yellow up here because with just one meeple, I can score a bunch. But more often than not, well, there's uh, two types of colors, so you want to send two. But if you haven't finished your mural, you won't have as many meeples that you can actually come and see over here. The way everything ties together is just clockwork perfection. It's fun. It's fast. Uh, it's got a really uh, cool draft where whenever your turn comes around again, whatever you thought you were going to do, there are going to be new opportunities opportunities that you weren't expecting. The uh, different setup you get every single time you play with this big variety of septals. And hey, not for nothing, a really fun solo mode too that is very uh, just quick, quick, quick. Everything about this game is fun and fast and Jen and I enjoyed it immensely. Um, and I, again, like I said right up front, Dustin and Milan... These two designers, they're largely known for working with button-shy games, so the majority of their work has been focusing on just little micro-games, you know, 18 cards in a little wallet uh, that gives you depth of gameplay. For them, this is a big game. Now, I think compared to most modern board games, this is kind of a nice little modest thing, but still, this is um, Dustin and Milan working in a much bigger venue, and they pull it off beautifully. It's a wonderful game to look at, just like uh, the real uh, city, uh, umbrella line city streets of Agueda. Uh, go uh, do a Google search and look at some pictures. Oh man, I've got to go see this in person myself. But the gameplay here works. And as an extra benefit, there are um, simpler and more complex scoring cards in here. So if you want to treat this as almost a straight gateway game that you can just play with family members, you can pick the simple scoring cards that are here and everybody can just sit uh, down and enjoy the game while you're still working on a higher level trying to make the timing to get super scoring based on how these streets evolve. and um, Or you can bring in some of the more complex ones so you're trying to get certain patterns and all sorts of things. I'm, I'm just really impressed. A lot of fun. But folks, 
This is just one game in a three-game set. That is crowdfunding right now on Kickstarter. You can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the links down in the show notes to uh, learn more about this game. Um, and you'll see the final version and all that uh, instead of my uh, prototype copy. But you can also learn about the other two games, Color Field and Donut Shop. And while I have not played those games, both of those games have run-throughs here on the channel. There's links for them down in the show note as well well. And interesting, I mentioned Jeffrey Owlers earlier. Jeffrey Owlers, one of my favorite designers of all time, a real master of tiling, he did Donut Shop. And of the three games, I would say Donut Shop is the most interactive. Because it is tiling, you know, creating big uh, a field of donuts and then trying to box them up. But everybody's working in the same donut shop. So you might be building for something that somebody else might snag away from you. Or somebody else might create an opportunity for you that you they didn't even know they were doing. Um, whereas in a great and color field, everybody's kind of working in their own little backyard, and really the main interaction comes from the draft. Color field, the other game, on first glance, is by far the simplest game. It is a game, another tile layer, about creating abstract works of art with beautiful, colorful um, tiles that you're placing and trying to get them to line up to get the biggest splotches of color and you can rotate tiles and whatnot. It's the simplest in terms of rules, but um, from watching uh, the run-through that Ruel did with his wife, Michelle, it looks like it could be the crunchiest of them, the most mind-bending because you have so many opportunities. So simple, pure, elegant game, uh, you know, abstract style tile layer with color fields, a very interactive uh, tile layer with uh, Donut Shop, which Kimberly did a run-through for, and and then you've got this one, the one that I did a run through for. And I think this one has the most moving parts, the most special rules. This is the most gamerly of them. Uh, again, not really very interactive other than you know the, the fact that we were racing in the, the draft. Uh, so I think this one works the best for us. But all three games look fantastic. If you want to know about all of them, including Aguada, again, hit that I, follow that link down in the show notes, um, or just go on ahead and push the buttons that are on screen right now. Uh, folks, uh, 25th Century Games has a great little triple feature here, and I am impressed by what I played and also what I've seen. So talk to you, everybody. Have a nice day. So long. Bye bye.